Welcome back to Jera Pro Shot Vids, everyone. I got Frankie Lavoie here, one of the best spare shooters on the planet. You don't win two US Opens and Tournament Champions without making your spares. Today, we're doing something more difficult. We got multi pins, we got washouts, and we've got a couple splits. We're gonna get Frankie's version of how he shoots them, why he shoots them that way. Maybe you guys can learn a thing or two from one of the best players in the world. We're gonna be going through a few of the harder spares that people tend to struggle with the most. First up, the 36910, one of the most difficult makeable spares out there. What I like to do is, first of all, grab my spare ball. I throw urethane for spares. What I'm looking for out of the 36910 is very similar to the 3610 spare. I just go one and one left off of that so that I can try to hit the three pin a little bit more square. And hopefully, if I hit enough of the three pin with a straight ball, the ball will take care of the nine. Just like that. One of the most common mistakes I see with the 36910 with amateurs is that they try to hook into it. Hooking at the 36910 might be fine when you're on a house pattern or something that's a little bit easier, but as you get to harder and harder lane patterns, the ball motion is going to be a lot more unpredictable when you try to do that, and that's why amateurs miss a lot more. So I like to go with a straighter approach when the lanes get hard. That way I always know that if my ball goes straight and I hit what I'm looking at, I'm going to make the spare. Next on the list is the bucket, another one that people struggle a lot with. A lot of what I do when I shoot spares is come from trial and error, um, just me spending a lot of time in the bowling center. And for this spare specifically, I figure that my ball can't fit between the 4-pin and the 5-pin. So if I go straight up the lane in between the 4-pin and the 5-pin, technically I should never miss it. Yeah, like I said, spending a lot of time in a bowling center. If you look at the width of the ball and the space between the four and the five, the ball doesn't fit. So if you hit what you're looking at and you're going straight up the lane, you should never miss it. So I actually missed my target a little bit on the last one, but I still made the spare. That's because with the way I shoot it, if I hit the two pit dead on, I can't miss the spare. But if I miss a board left or right, I'm still giving myself enough miss room to still make the spare. There's two common mistakes I see amateurs make with this spare. The first one is hooking at it. We already covered that. When you're getting to harder and harder lane conditions, hooking becomes more unpredictable. Therefore, making the spare becomes more difficult. The other mistake I see people make is while they're still using a spare ball or throwing it straight, they're going at it from right to left, which brings in the 2-5 chop in play. Next up, we have the PBA washout or the super washout. One, two, four, six, ten. Very different strategies if I'm just going for count or if I'm trying to make the spare. If I'm going for count, I'm gonna try to get the ball to cover the one, two, four. If I'm going for the spare, I'll try to get the ball to hit the one, six, send the one into the two, four, get the ball to hit the six into the 10. peasy lemon squeezy. Whenever I'm looking at complex spares like this, I always try to make it as simple as possible. So in this case, there's a very familiar spare in there that I look for, and it's the baby split. It's just shifted over. Instead of being the 310, I'm still shooting a baby split, but now the pins are the head pin and the six pin. Question time again with Frankie. As you just saw, I throw urethane at just about all my spares. I want to know today, what do you use to shoot your spares? Here we have a very similar spare to the last one, but just a regular washout without the six spin. Now with this one, I actually shoot this quite a bit different from the last one. Whereas on the PBA washout, I try to get the ball to hit the head pin and the six pin, the ball won't go from the head pin to the 10 pin on this one, so I aim for the left side of the head pin to send it into the 10 pin. As with every other spare I shoot, I try to give myself the most margin for error to still make the spare. Something else that I see people do is shoot the washout from right to left 
and then they have to cut the head pin super thin and they give themselves a little bit less of an optimal angle to send the head pin that way. So by moving a little bit further left, I'm kind of opening up that head pin to go in the direction that I want it to. So if the ball's coming from here, it's a little bit easier to send the head pin to the right into the 10 pin. And sometimes you get the wall as help. I talk about simplifying things a lot, so regardless of how easy or difficult a spare is, it all boils down to one thing, accuracy. Now on the last shot, I actually missed my target, but still made the spare off the wall. If I hit my target, which is, what I'm, which is the only thing I should be focused on, I know the head pin's gonna go straight into the tent. It's a miss for the purpose of this video. So same idea as the washout. If I'm all the way to the right, that gives me a really narrow window where I can actually hit the two pin to send it into the 10. So I personally like to be a little bit further left and go a little bit straighter at it to give me, at least I get the impression that I have a lot more of the two pin to play with. Another thing that's important about some of these splits is figuring out when you should try to go for it and when you should actually go for the count, especially if you're in a close match situation. Sometimes it's actually beneficial to just get the count and not worry about the spare. Moving on to the 4-9 now, and with the way I shoot spares, hopefully you're starting to notice a theme. I'm gonna be on the left side of the lane because I always try to get as close as I can to that spot on the four pin that I'm looking at to slide it into the nine. Again, I personally feel that if I move too far right for this spare, it's gonna make it a lot harder to cut the four into the nine. The other thing to worry about with this one is how far left you actually go. Now, there are limits to what I'm saying. For example, I'm on a 36 foot pattern right now. If I get too far left, I bring, I bring into play all those dry boards on the extreme left side of the lane. And the ball actually hooks into the gutter even though I'm trying to make it go straight. So I would just be careful because there is a way you can be too far left on these. Otherwise, it's just about hidden targets. Just about hidden targets. This last one we're shooting is the 36710 and our friend Jungo here tells me that I'm pretty good at this one and I have to agree with him. I am pretty deadly at this one. <laughs> I stuck. That wasn't even a good one and I made it. <laughs> this time we're trying to send a three pin to the left side into the seven, but it's the same idea as when we were trying to send the two pin to the right side into the 10. I'm not gonna be extremely far left on this. I'm standing on 32. For the same reason as I explained earlier, I wanna give myself a lot more of the three pin to play with. And it doesn't always work. <laughs> so overall, there's quite a bit of thought process that goes into my spare shooting strategies. But as a general rule, I'll start by looking at where I want the ball to hit the pin, and from there, I'll draw a straight line back to the arrows and zone in on which board I want to hit. So there you have it. All right, as you just seen, Frankie just went through all those spares. He made them all pretty easily. Uh, what advice do you have for some amateur bowlers out there who are trying to make more spares? I'd say there's probably two things. Number one, try to go as straight as you can. Hooking the ball makes it a lot more unpredictable on a lot of different patterns, especially when those patterns are transitioning. And number two, I see a lot of people try to throw straight, but they don't actually have a spare ball. They try to flatten their hand out, and a lot of people can't actually throw it as straight as they would like to. So getting a spare ball, polyester, would probably be a good investment. You can actually keep your hand a little bit closer to normal, and it'll go straight. On a few of those spares, mostly the splits, the context matters. Like where you are in the game, where you are in the tournament, if you're bowling one-on-one -on -one match, do you go for count? Do you go for the spare? Uh, can you just give us a little bit of info of what you look for and how you calculate going for count or going for the make? Yeah, as you said, Jungle, um, context is really important. 
when I'm in a qualifying block, typically I'll go for most of the most of the splits. I'll try to make them. Maybe as we get later on in those in those qualifying portions, I'll try to get an idea of where this where I'm at in the standings. If I'm close to making a cut, for example, or a TV show. Um, as far as head-to-head -head matches go, then context really matters. I, I try to keep a little bit closer attention to what the score is between mine and my opponents, and I'll make my decision based off of that. But if I feel like getting the count is more beneficial than trying to go for the split and potentially missing that count, yeah. um, I'll definitely go for that. So it's not always beneficial to try to make the spare. All right, guys, so once again, question of the day is, which ball do you use to make your spares or miss them? Reactive, urethane, plastic? Let me know in the comments below. Nice. Right? Well, almost right. <laughs> almost done. <laughs> so if you're listening to Frank, you need a spare ball, don't have one, shop.boofabowling.com. Promo code jungle barks 10% off. Thanks for watching everyone. See you in the next bit. Shot.